Our knowledge of coronary atherosclerosis has changed dramatically in the last few years. New imaging techniques, such as intravascular ultrasound, or IVUS, have made it possible to investigate atherosclerosis in its early stages. This video is devoted to broadening your understanding of the progression of early atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is a chronic disease resulting in the buildup of plaque. Atherosclerotic plaques develop and progress within the artery wall long before they begin to encroach on the lumen. Because they do not protrude into the lumen, they escape detection by conventional diagnostic tools like angiography. Recent research has also shown that these early atherosclerotic plaques, which are filled with lipid, are more likely to rupture and cause coronary events than more stable, advanced plaques that cause narrowing of the lumen. Coronary artery disease is a leading cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide. To reduce the extraordinary risk associated with CAD, early recognition of CAD and aggressive risk factor intervention are imperative. Elevated low-density lipoprotein, or LDL cholesterol, is strongly associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular events. Here you see LDL, HDL, white blood cells, and red blood cells in circulation. The majority of the cholesterol in the blood is contained in low-density lipoprotein, which transports cholesterol from the liver to nerve tissues, cell membranes, and other cells for metabolic purposes. The cholesterol in atherosclerotic plaques is derived mainly from excess LDL cholesterol. High-density lipoprotein, or HDL, is believed to function as a retrieval service, removing cholesterol from the circulation to the liver for excretion. For this reason, HDL is often referred to as the good cholesterol. Low levels of HDL cholesterol are considered an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. White blood cells, called monocytes, are wandering scavengers that have the primary function of consuming foreign or damaging substances. Monocytes participate in the atherosclerotic process by taking up residence within the vessel wall and consuming lipids. Red blood cells are the transporters of oxygen and other nutrients to the body's tissues. Atherosclerosis develops from complex interactions between LDL, constituents of blood such as monocytes, and cells in the arterial wall. The normal artery wall is composed of three layers, the intima, the media, and the adventitia. The intima, or inner layer, is composed of a single layer of cells called the endothelium. The media contains mostly smooth muscle cells that enable the vessel to dilate or constrict. The adventitia, or outermost layer, is composed mostly of fibroelastic tissue. The adventitia is separated from the media by the external elastic membrane. LDL is a macromolecule that can enter the artery wall. The atherosclerotic process begins when LDL accumulates abnormally within the artery wall at a rate determined by plasma concentrations of LDL and the condition of the endothelium. Elevated LDL levels, as defined by NSEP, are thought to promote atherosclerosis. LDL passes through endothelial cells and enters the intima, where it can undergo a process called oxidation. Oxidized LDL is toxic, and this initiates an inflammatory process. Monocytes respond by migrating from the bloodstream into the artery wall, where they mount the inflammatory response. Now called macrophages, they engulf the cholesterol-rich oxidized LDL and become foam cells. When the foam cells die, they release their lipid content, creating what is known as a lipid core. A fibrous cap consisting largely of collagens and elastin forms over the lipid core. The fibrous cap represents an attempt by the body to heal the lesion. Continued plaque growth caused by accumulation of LDL within the intima causes the external elastic membrane to expand. This compensatory enlargement, known as arterial remodeling, allows the vessel to maintain an adequate, if not normal, lumen area and blood flow. For this reason, angiography, which visualizes only those plaques that encroach upon the lumen, underrepresents the extent of atherosclerosis. However, as a burden of plaque increases, the artery can no longer compensate by expanding outward, and the plaque begins to protrude into the lumen. 
This generally occurs when plaque involvement reaches about 40% of the vessel circumference. Under certain conditions, such as may be caused by biomechanical and hemodynamic stresses, disruption of plaques can occur. Plaques prone to rupture include those that contain a large lipid core covered by a thin fibrous cap. Often these plaques have not penetrated the luminal area and hence are not visible angiographically. When a plaque ruptures, the lipid core comes into contact with the blood. This sets the stage for the formation of a thrombus or clot. The thrombus may partially or totally block an artery, causing an abrupt reduction in blood flow. Partial blockage of the lumen may cause the symptoms of angina. Complete blockage of the vessel lasting more than two to four hours can cause an acute event such as MI. Healing may also take place. In fact, plaque rupture with subsequent healing is now believed to be the major mechanism by which atherosclerotic lesions progress and narrow the lumen. Plaques that heal generally have a higher fibrotic composition than before, making them more stable and less prone to future rupture. This video has summarized new insights into the development of atherosclerosis. Recent clinical research has focused on the important role of non-occlusive but vulnerable plaques in clinical events. In the early stages of atherosclerosis, plaques develop and progress within the intima without encroaching on the lumen. Because they do not protrude into the lumen, they generally escape detection by traditional diagnostic tools. The initial response of an artery to plaque growth caused by LDL accumulation within the intima is remodeling. The external elastic membrane expands while the lumen retains its normal shape, allowing the vessel to maintain blood flow. However, when the burden of plaque reaches about 40% of the vessel circumference, the artery can no longer expand outward, and the plaque begins to occupy the lumen. Plaque rupture sets the stage for thrombus formation, which can lead to a clinical event. However, healing may also take place. In fact, plaque rupture with subsequent healing is thought to be an underlying mechanism of atherosclerotic progression. Plaques that heal generally have a thick fibrous cap, which tends to stabilize them against disruption. They may be associated with clinical symptoms if they obstruct blood flow. These new insights should also encourage the development of strategies aimed at lipid lowering.